Hey you guys, it's Peter and I'm back. Of course I'm back. I'm not going anywhere. Beast! <laughs> I've tried to do this intro like five times, you guys, and I keep on laughing, so we're just gonna we're just gonna move through it, okay? I'm YouTube famous now <laughs> available in 2021 the album dad af <clears throat> girls just wanna have fun <laughs> Woo, that was about as tone deaf as everything that i read on twitter these days all right uh, <clears throat> Rock on gold dust. I went to a party last Saturday night. I didn't get laid. I want to dance with somebody. Beast. Should I add a new one in there? I wear my sunglasses at night. How are you guys doing? Oh my gosh. I am such a, I am in, I'm such a silly. I am such a silly. I am in such a silly, happy mood today. Are you guys in a good mood? I hope you are. Um, in Indianapolis today. Hi, I reside in Indiana. Hi, <laughs> I'm Peter Mon, contestant number 23, residing from the corn state of Indiana, where the corn is as yellow as our teeth are. Thank you, judges and panel of distinguished judges. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Proudly representing the corn state of Indiana, where our teeth are as yellow as the corn. <laughs> Woo, I love a good pageant, don't you? Anyway, in Indianapolis today, it is like upper 60s. It is absolutely beautiful outside. No, it's not 69. Family friendly, okay? It's like 68 and a half outside. <laughs> oh my God, have you guys seen that TikTok? I don't know why I think this one is so funny. It's the guy, and he's like, I keep on seeing something in the mirror, and I'm like, is there a ghost over there in the mirror? But anyway, uh, people always think that there's a that's a ghost right there, and it's not. It's actually a clock sitting on top of a table. But anyway, um, did you see that TikTok of that guy? And he's like, so we got a lot of snow last night, like four or five inches. <laughs> that's a lot, right? No. <laughs> I don't know why that TikTok is so funny. I could watch that TikTok like over and over and over and over again. By the way, did y'all hear that Charlie D'Amelio? She's, she's lost her passion for the TikTok. I can't imagine why. I can't imagine how hard it is to come up with these videos and get paid $20 million a year. I would never in a million years. Okay, this is what Charlie D'Amelio needs, okay? Charlie and Dixie D'Amelio, they need to go stand their feet, stand on their feet for 10 hours a day and learn what real labor is like to say that they have lost their passion for a job that pays them unreal amounts of money and affords them to have the life that they have. You want to talk about entitled youth? Oh, oh my God. But anyway, they're not the other, the only ones. There's all these people out there. Charlie seems so sweet, doesn't she? But you won't be able to find her on the TikTok, apparently, because she seems to have lost her passion. <laughs> I think it's real nice that TikTok picked her to be the one that goes to the top of the TikTok. You know what I mean? Ain't nobody picking me. I wish they would. I'm trying real hard over there. But anyway, that's the, the real big news of the day. Okay, we can go now. <laughs> no. Anyway, how are you guys doing? Are you having a beautiful day? Today is like one of my favorite days of the week. It's my home group day, which if you don't know what that is, if you work a 12-step program, you are suggested to have a home group, which is a meeting that you attend on a weekly or regular basis. And you do service work there and you make a commitment to that group. And tonight is my home group. And so I get to see like friends of mine that I've known for 26 years of my life. And I'm super excited about it. And um, I'm always in just a good mood on Tuesdays because of that. And uh, we're going to talk about recovery in just a second because it has something to do with uh, one of the deep investigative stories that we're going to talk about today to do with uh, Jacqueline Hill. Um, we're also going to talk about James Charles in a second and um, why I feel like, well, I feel like this is an important thing to talk about, the perpetuation of what happened. And, um, you know, it's interesting to me, and I said in a video um, not too long ago, I mentioned Adam McIntyre, and then I said that he, like, tweets, like, you know, 400 times a day, and he was like, he thought that was hilarious. He said I was dragging him, but it's the truth of the nature all day long. There's a lot of people that live on the Twitter, okay? I just don't, because, like, here's how I feel about the Twitter, okay? Um, the Twitter, to me, how can I explain it? Um, the Twitter, to me, is like, you know when you go to, like, 
the same McDonald's over and over and over again. I, actually, let's call out Burger King since they were so horrible yesterday. We'll, we'll say Burger King. Now, McDonald's doesn't deserve to get, you know, dragged through the bed. But when you go to the same Burger King, you know, every time, and you and ask for your fries, and they come out, and they're, like, soggy or hard, and they don't taste right and whatever, and you keep on going back, and you keep on going back, and every time you're disappointed, and every time you leave there, and you're like, God, all I wanted was some fries and a really good Diet Coke, and you leave there, and you're like, ah, gag a maggot, right? And you're like, why do I keep on coming back here? That's what Twitter is like for me, okay? Not only that, but you got a bunch of people standing outside Burger King complaining and, and going off about how bad the food is all the time. Why would I want to visit that place? That's what Twitter is like for me. I try to roll through and say, hey, everybody, McDonald's has got better fries. You know what I mean? That's what I try to do. So anyway, um, but we're going to talk about all that in just a second. Did you hear, did you read, was that yesterday? Yeah, that was my video yesterday. But, you know, Adam McIntyre, he said that he thought it was was interesting that this story, okay, or these allegations um, against James Charles, it's like people are coming out, and there's a lot more when it ha has to do with Shane Dawson, and I actually addressed this in an entire video. Adam addressed it in an entire video. A lot of people have addressed it and compared, you know, James Charles to Shane Dawson only in these kind of situations and why people are so quickly forgetting about James Charles. I said in my original video, they're not forgetting. I just think it's a, a, a younger audience base that is... Um, they are, I think, maybe not understanding the significance of this, okay, of this allegation, and also the significance of him just coming out and putting it on a Twitter statement, right? And so um, I feel like uh, there are things that enable that to continue to happen, um, you know, with like James continuing to just put statements out or do this or whatever. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. But before I do... You guys, look what came in the mail today. Now, I feel like this kind of should say, like, you know, best grandpa or something on it. Because it kind of, look, it's a new hat. It's a new day for hair. But look, my Miami hat came in the mail today. <gasps> I got this from Aviator Nation. I love this hat so much. I texted it to my husband, and he said, that's a cute hat. But I got to break it in a little bit. But don't you think it looks like one of those grandpas or be best grandpa or whatever, you know? But anyway, it says Miami on it with a rainbow. Because if you didn't know, it has been... A long time dream of my husband and I to move to Miami and um, we had started that process back last year and we are now picking up and continuing that process not to move to Miami full time but to have a house there or not a, to have a, a mansion in Miami <laughs> no nothing like that but to have a place in Miami and have a place here and be able to go back and forth and that's been our dream for a very very long time and, um, and, and part of the fun for me and that is getting to go to South Florida and seeing uh, you know like what the 12 step programs are like down there as well and getting to meet some new people so I'm excited about that um but I had to show you that hat okay roll call first of all let me put I've been playing with this uh, Jaclyn Hill lip gloss but I haven't put it on yet I will say I love this lip gloss but like the applicator it doesn't really hold a lot of lip gloss on it and um I have to say I'm still a huge fan of the Lunar Beauty I just really really am I think the gold color is really pretty um, it just isn't, like, it doesn't, the applicator doesn't really hold, it, this reminds me a lot of the Patrick Ta lip gloss, honestly, um, so, I'm still a huge fan of the Lunar Beauty, obviously, but it's pretty, and it's a really pretty component, and it's very Christmassy, <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. A lot of people are speculating that maybe this was her Christmas collection that she didn't put out, I don't know, maybe, but anyway, we're gonna talk about Jaclyn Hill in just a second. I put out on Twitter, happy Tuesday, what's up, and I wanna take roll call for drama class, do you have your number two pencil? Oh, I just got my anniversary Starbucks cup. Can we talk about this? Oh! She's so pretty, isn't she? You agree. You think she's pretty. Anyway, I love her so much. So cheers. Um, today I reviewed the Leprechaun Latte over on uh, my review channel. So go check it out. All right. I put Happy Tuesday. What's up? And Jeff said, just saw your IG story. What was the purple drink? So I went to brunch. Um with uh, my husband's best friend today and uh they had a drink there they have different drinks like all the time it's like very healthy there you know like kale juice and stuff and they had a drink and it was called the purple haze and i retweeted this hold on a second and um showed the picture and what was in it it looked it was delicious you guys and it had lemon cane sugar butterfly pea flower tea 
hint of lavender and it says yeah it's fresh and it was delicious so thank you for asking that was really fun and i also had avocado toast i was very healthy today i was really proud of myself okay so let's see what else people said i want to make sure there's not okay uh okay let's see contemplating playing hooky said uh bunny hey bunny she's in our book club and um tasha said round and round drama okay i did i read your tweet but i didn't understand it about drama being out and just basically me over here on the country road, staying in my own lane. Country roads, take me home to the place I belong, West Virginia. Out of drama, leave me alone. <laughs> Boost! Okay. Um, I've seen that, but I don't really know tons about it. I've seen some things, though. Um, someone said, not too much. Wondering your opinion on Jacqueline's post last night, which I'm going to talk about in just a second. Cecilia, you're breaking my heart. Okay. Happy Wednesday from Australia, said Simone. Hey, Simone. Um, I'm going to go around and around. See. Oh, wait. Okay, another one. Uh, said, about to start watching your Peterisms video. You are amazing. Thank you so much, Emily. Um, okay, Lazy Day said, Robbie, uh, work, work, work. Um, Robin said, but grateful that she has a job, she said. Taco Tuesday. Okay, let's see. Can you give, uh, Samantha said, can you give my boyfriend Keegan a shout out? We love you. Ah, Keegan! Be too much, she said. Um, Okay, let's go on. It's my Friday. Misha said, hey, Misha. Uh, is that the Misha from my draw a book club? No, two Mishas. I know. Oh, my God. I thought I saw somebody in here that said something about um, book club. Bula. Oh, there was something that I wanted. Okay. Nina said, tomorrow's my birthday. I'm a little over one year clean and sober uh, and struggling a little bit. Your videos help distract me and help me to try and stay sane. Hope you're having a happy birthday. That is awesome. And you can do it. You can do this. Okay. And, uh, oh, somebody underneath there said something to her. That's awesome. Uh, Crystal said, it's my 40th birthday on Saturday, and I just ordered a new pop coffee pot for myself. Happy birthday! Robbie is in here, and she's responding to things. Always, everybody's so nice. Allie became an aunt today, so congratulations, Allie, on that. Um, and on and on and on. Okay, so uh, I wanted to, before I get into this, I want to say... I was recommended this show. Now, y'all know that my intros and stuff, like, that's all just part of my videos, okay? I, I can come on here and I can do a really quick drama video and get right into the drama if you guys want me to, but I like to talk about other things that I think are important as well. Um, I was recommended to watch a show on HBO, call, uh, HBO Max called It's a Sin, and I started watching it last night. Um, by the, I was talking about it on my vlog, and I had only gotten to, like, I thought I was done with the third episode, but I was actually right at the beginning of the third episode. And, <clears throat> um, so, it's about a group of gay men and their female friend that all lived together in London in the mid to late uh, 80s during the AIDS crisis. And, you know, this was a period uh, when I came out. I came out in 1990, so it's like, I came out right on the heels of this. And when I tell you guys that this show captured exactly what that time period was for me, like, when I came out, and the fear that um, gay men lived with in, during the AIDS crisis, and I was on the heels of that, so I didn't even live during the middle of it. Or I, I did, but I wasn't out during the middle of it. The show is so phenomenal, and it's so important, you know, and we talk about all these shows out there, and we talk about, I talk a lot about true crime, and we talk about what's trending on Netflix, and we talk about this. If you guys have HBO Max and you have the ability to watch this show, please, please, please watch It's a Sin on HBO Max. Um, it is an extremely, extremely important show. Um, my life has been greatly affected for the past 30 years since I have been out. I came out 30 years ago last summer um, <clears throat> by friends of mine being infected and passing away from, a passing away from AIDS and being infected with HIV. Um, and, you know, I have witnessed on YouTube in the last few years since I've been on YouTube, people weaponize the disease of HIV and uh, AIDS. And it's one of the reasons why I took the Adam and Eve sponsorship, because um, they so believe in giving proceeds, 20% of their proceeds, to the fight of HIV and prevention of HIV and AIDS around the world, which is phenomenal. Um, I think we live in a world today where people have forgotten what that was like. Um, it's not gone. It's There's people out there still today that are living and thriving, um, asymptomatic with HIV, and there are people that are still 
dying from AIDS. And I think that we need to continue to remember what that was like. And, um, you know, and it's important because you see the evolution in the show of it when it came out, people believing that it was a gay cancer to the point where it was realized that everybody could be affected by this. Um, you know, men, women, no matter what your background was, whatever. And I think it's really, really important uh, that shows like this are talked about and pushed into the spotlight. And I just want to thank every one of you out there that encouraged me to watch this show. I was absolutely blown away. I can't wait to watch the end of it. Um, I will tell you that there is a huge part in there about, it's very personal to me because, and I, I didn't, hadn't seen this part when I talked about it in my vlog last night, but one of the characters gets diagnosed with epilepsy um, or seizure disorder, is having seizures. And I was diagnosed with epilepsy when I was 27, almost 28 years old, I think. Um, and uh, that was very, very scary for me at that time because they didn't know the cause and the origination or ri where it was originating. And, um... You know, and I've shared this on here a lot. Like, I've had a lot of people through the years that didn't like me on YouTube and would say things like uh, they would they would use, uh, like I've said, HIV and AIDS weaponizing against me. Um, you know, I have friends of mine that are very, very living, proud people, okay, w that educate people and tell their stories about HIV and AIDS. And um, if that was my story... I would get on camera and I would share that too. And it's not, and it's not because I did anything different. It really, really isn't. And we talk about a disease like that, you know, um, it's because first of all, I was very, very drunk back then. And I, and a lot of people just didn't want to hook up with me and that's the reality, you know? And so, um, I, I think that minimized a lot of my risk. Um, but it could have happened to me with just one person. It could happen to anybody with just one person. I think it's important that we continue to talk about this so that a whole other generation, it doesn't happen to again with different strains and things like that. And, um, you know, and I, I think we live in a world where we kind of just want to forget that that happened. And this show is so important. And I know I read an article that because so many people are watching a show in the UK, that it's, it's gotten a whole new younger generation of people to go out and get tested and to educate themselves on HIV and AIDS. And and, um, you know, and I, so I think it's really important to watch. So please go watch. It's a sin. It, it, it's fantastic. It is very sad, um, but it is, I think, liberating at times too. And it so reminds me of when I came out and the feeling that I had inside and um, all of that. So please go watch the show. It's fantastic. Okay, let's get into talking, first of all, about Jaclyn Hill. Now, I just went into my Ulta, okay? I have to tell you, I was a little surprised that I didn't run into Jaclyn Hill because she's posting pictures about how she's running into people. I think she went to the Ulta and whatever. And I'm very excited for her that her makeup is now being sold in Ulta. I don't know what I expected, okay? I really don't, but I'm gonna show you a picture of the stand that was in my Ulta. So when you came in to the store, there was a sign outside, which was really just the back of the stand that they have in the store. When you go in, this is what the stand looked like. And it just had her um, blending duo or whatever it's called, her blushing duo at the top. And it was almost, I think it was all sold out. And then it had her highlighters below that. And there were like all sold out except for like three. They hardly had any stock whatsoever in there, which was really surprising to me. Um, and I don't believe that they got a lot of stock in there of it as well. And I was really kind of surprised that it was just this kind of small deal. I mean, I thought they would have it front and center and all time. I mean, this has been such a big deal. Jocelyn's talked about it. Is she a big influencer anymore? I kind of wonder, you know? And it makes me, like, I really thought this was gonna be this huge deal. It's also interesting to me, and I was talking to a friend of mine last night on the phone about the fact that, like, she hasn't done any videos about this. She hasn't really, like, pushed. I mean, it's just interesting to me. And then you see this, and I'm like, okay, well, you're kind of, like, pushed in between, you know, uh, like, uh, <laughs> Too Faced Cosmetics and Tarte, I don't know, it was like two little things like that were bigger than hers, some candles, and I was just like, this is kind of weird to me a little bit, right? So I don't know what that's about. I still hope that she has a great release. Maybe they're just trying things out before they bring her in there. But I do know with the release of James Charles Palette through Morphe, like Morphe, there's like a whole section, right, um, over at Ulta at least the way that it used to be. And so when Jeffree Star was, his stuff was out, it was like a whole spread. It was a whole section. Um, when, like with the, the sprays and stuff, when James Charles palette came out, it was the same thing. It was like a whole section, right? And I'm like, why does Jacqueline just get this little like kiosk thing off to the side? It wasn't even the main part of the store or anything. I was very surprised by it. So anyway, um, I went in there to kind of buy some of her products because I wanted to do a giveaway on this channel. 
I think I'm gonna start doing giveaways over here. All you'll have to do is follow my Instagram. So go check out my Instagram, it's listed below. It's just at Peter Mon. If you follow my Instagram, um, and also probably my Peter Does Stuff channel, if you follow that, I'm gonna start doing giveaways. Um, so please go check out those things. And um, I'm gonna be doing regular giveaways over here again, because I miss doing that. I used to do that a lot. So that was the first thing with Jaclyn Hill. Then Jaclyn Hill, hold on, let me get my glasses on, my reading glasses. Jaclyn Hill put this tweet out yesterday for um, International Women's Day. Okay, let me read the comment, the first set. Well, hold on. I'll read the tweet to you first. I have it printed, uh, not printed. I have it screenshot on my, I'm looking up International Women's Day instead of Jaclyn Hill, like she's the spokesperson. I don't think she is the spokesperson, but I could be wrong. Um, so somebody tweeted her something and I think it was kind of like a harsh statement. And so of course, Jaclyn Hill, you know, she's good about like responding to people. I don't know, the tweet is unavailable now. Uh, I wish somebody had put it underneath here and I looked, but um, someone said, Please keep, she, so she responded and said, please keep in mind that 10 years ago, I was on food stamps, married to a drug addict, had a restraining order against my father and had absolutely no support other than my mother's encouragement. Everything I have, I owe to God, my mom and me. Happy International Women's Day. And then somebody says something about her mom's support and she responds and says, I'm not kidding. I'm going to frame this and put it in my office. This is the most beautiful tweet. And this woman says um, her, about her mom's strength and being really supportive to her, which I agree, right? So, um, but it was interesting. I started getting a lot of DMs from people, okay? And I want to read this one tweet that I got because I thought it was, it was very similar to many of the responses that I was getting. I think people were saying, hey, Jacqueline, I think it's fantastic. You know, you built yourself up and look at you today and happy International Women's Day. And you should be proud of that, right? You know, as was she re uh, referred to herself as a ballin CEO and founder. Interestingly enough, I was also sent something, only one person sent it to me and it was kind of like a screenshot and it was hard to see, so I wasn't gonna use it on here. Um, but it was an email from Ultra, oh, Ultra, <laughs> Ultra Music Festival, no, Ulta. And it said, like, it showed other people and their makeup brands, and it said, like, founder and CEO, but next to Jacqueline's, it just said founder. And people, I, this person was speculating, is Jacqueline not the CEO of Jacqueline Cosmetics? And if she isn't the CEO, who is the CEO of Jacqueline Cosmetics? So, interesting. Um, let me know in the comment section below if you know that. But this person responded to my tweet today. They also sent me an email, and I received a lot of emails about this, or not emails, direct messages. And she said, um, wondering your opinion on Jacqueline's post last night where she mentioned being married to a drug addict. The way she worded it seems so insensitive and tone deaf. Being an addict in recovery, it left me feeling disappointed. Wondering your opinion. Um, you know, I, I have to tell you, and I'm just going to completely just take an outsider's point of view looking in at Jacqueline Hill's life. I don't know... Um, I didn't take any offense to it, okay? That, this is just me. But everybody has a right to be offended by things or whatever. Um, I, When it comes to my recovery stuff, like, there are things that I choose to be offended about and there are things that I choose not to be offended about. I'm going to talk about that in just a second because I think it's important for people to understand that. Not just with me, but with other people as well. Um, I uh, got sober for me. I am sober for me. I work in a, you know, on my sobriety for me. And I do it for me. That being said, other people in my life were greatly affected by it, mostly my father and my stepmother. And uh, my mom was in her own active addiction at the time and she got sober six months later, but she didn't really even like have any kind of true idea of a lot of what was going on. So it was my dad that was greatly affected by a lot of it. Um, for my dad to say 20 years later, you know, um, you know, he calls me Pete to say, you know, Pete, you know, was an active drug addict. We went through really, really hard times with him and I'm now on the other side and I'm, I'm proud of myself. I've come a long way as a father that doesn't enable him anymore. That doesn't participate in that. And you know, like, and I love my, my kid and I'm proud of him, you know, whatever. Um, but like, that was really a hard time. I, I feel like that's my dad's life journey and experience and I don't have a right to take that from him um as you know a drug addict and an alcoholic I I put that on my dad I've never gotten like I've never like I don't my sobriety is not for pats on the back I don't do it for that you know and um most of us are very, very, you know, humble about our sobriety birth dates and things like that because it's just like we want to show to other people that it's possible but those are humbling times too. I've never seen, you know, I, I don't see a lot of people in recovery like stand up and go, yes, I've been sober for 300 years today. You know what I mean? It's like, kind of like, yeah, today's my sobriety birthday. And like, we're proud of that. 
and to show it to other people as an example, but there's not an arrogance and ego that goes along with that. Now, that being said, I understand how the statement came across that people would be offended. And this is where I think that Jaclyn Hill has to be very, very careful of who her audience is. I didn't realize what a huge following of people that I have in recovery until I started saying shout your recovery dates out. And I thought I'd get like three or four or five. And I started getting like literally like 20, you know, 200. I mean, it was crazy. 20 to 200. And I think Jacqueline has to be very careful that I can't believe this video is going to go so long. So anyway, um, you know, to me, I can understand why people would be offended by that. I think it's a statement where, you know, hey, Jacqueline, be proud of yourself for where you've come from. Being married to an addict is not something that necessarily makes you the greatest person in the world, okay? I'm just saying, like, that's not something that we wear as a badge of honor. Like, look how hard I've gone. I don't know. It just is kind of... Uh, but I also think that that journey is very personal. She hasn't come out and spoken a lot about it. And I don't know what that was like for her. I don't know. And, um, and I think that we, whenever we're talking about these kind of stories, we have to be very sensitive and very careful to all people involved. I think it would have probably been best if she had not included that in her statement. That being said, I would really like to hear Jacqueline's side of the story, not to put John down, because I, I feel for him too as a struggling addict. I would like to hear Jacqueline's point of view. Of, I think it would be super powerful for her to talk about what it was like to be married to somebody in active addiction and how difficult that was for her, you know? I think that would be really powerful for her audience. That being said, I want to say something. Um, you know, I, I don't get caught up in a lot of, like I said, all this stuff out there and whatever. I've said this in the past and I'm going to say this again, okay? There's going to be, I think, conflict between people, whether it's between, you know, like drama channels and influencers or you guys and us or whatever, okay? We can, you know, have difference. One of the things I love about my comment section is that you guys keep it classy and you have a difference of opinion, but you can be nice to each other. And it's like, um, one of the things that I love about that is that um, I think that it shows that we can have a maturity of conversation, right? If you don't like somebody, there's a lot of things to pick about that person. You can make fun of their hobbies. You can make fun of, I don't know, uh, where they choose to live. There's a lot of things that you can uh, make fun of somebody about that doesn't show that you're a classless person, okay? When you are coming for somebody's sobriety on any level whatsoever, and I'm going to say this again because I firmly, firmly believe this, on YouTube, in your private life, in your head, whatever, when you are coming for somebody's sobriety, okay, questioning it, whatever, you are wishing death on that person, okay? Because I'm telling you right now for me, if I relapse, if I go back out there, if I'm struggling, and I don't put that on anybody else, that's my responsibility, okay? But if I do, okay, if I go back out there and use, I may not make it in. I may end up dead. So to wish that on somebody or to weaponize somebody's sobriety against them or to weaponize anything about their sobriety story is to, and, and Jacqueline did not do this. this is, I'm not talking about Jacqueline. She is not, she is completely removed in this whole situation. But to, I, I've seen a lot of this recently in the last couple months. To weaponize somebody's sobriety against them, okay, is truly, truly, truly at your heart, whether you recognize it or not, to wish death on somebody. And the reality is that I don't believe there is a person out there alive today that is not in some way indirectly affected by addiction, whether it's a friend, a family member, a neighbor, a student, whatever, okay? You know, a, a, a friend of a family member's whatever. So, you know, we've got to start enveloping each other with love and realize people are dying every single day and let's stop fighting with each other. We can have our differences of opinion, but why do we have to argue and fight with each other? It's just, it's not... It's just not fun. It's not nice. And it's not a good way to live your life. The emotional roller coaster that goes along with it. All right. I want to talk about James Charles real quick before uh, I, this video is now at 20. All right. James Charles. First of all, I want to say this about James Charles. Um, I think this is really, really interesting. A lot of people have been commenting about his hair. I made a comment about his hair as well. Here I post a picture somewhere up here on his Instagram today of his hair being curly. Um, James Charles originally came out and he said... I think this, I think that this kind of like idol worship or worshiping these kind of TikTok guys and things like that, James Charles doesn't really want to admit to, okay? James Charles originally came out and said that he wanted to get a perm for his hair because he wanted some natural wave. Instead of sitting there and using a curling iron, that he could, um, this way, if he had a perm, a natural, you know, whatever, that it would just give him this curly hair. I don't really care what he wants his hair to look like. I really don't care, okay? I mean, you know, he can flat iron it, he can shave it, he can 
can have curly hair. He can do whatever he wants with his hair, obviously, right? And I think he's a trendsetter, although now I think he's a trend follower because he's literally got the same hairdo that Al. And I was in, the, like, my husband and I were in the mall the other day. Well, just one store went into Saks, and there was all these kids in there looking at those Balenciaga shoes. And I'm thinking to myself, how y'all affording these, uh, you know, uh, these McQueen and uh, Balenciaga shoes when you're 17 years old. Well, are y'all TikTok famous of the world? So anyway, I'm sitting there and I, like, you know, and they all have the same hairdo. And I said to the girl that worked there, I said, they all have that same curly, curly hairdo. And she's like, yeah, they all do, all of them that come in here. So James, I'm sorry, but you're not a trendsetter anymore, okay? You're a follower is what you are. But I also am kind of wondering if maybe people think he's a little bit of a liar because he came out and he said he wanted this natural perm or he wanted this perm so he could do his hair and he didn't have to, the curling iron, blah, 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 and all this kind of stuff and now he's just using his curly hair he's not styling it anymore he's literally got the exact same hairdo hair don'ts tracy turnblatt from the movie hairspray he's literally got the same hairdo as all these tiktok guys okay hold on a second it's gonna stop and no this is not the drama or the whatever conversation commentary part of this video i just think it's really really interesting that nobody's calling him out on the fact that he got this perm so his hair was curly so he could just do it easier and he wouldn't have to use a curling iron and stand in front of the mirror all day long because that was his story, okay? Which to me, if that's the case, then James Charles is becoming the new Jeffree Star, okay? He's recreating history. He's recreating stories. He's telling stories to fit his narrative of how he wants to. And this is where I think it would be important for people out there that care because I don't care deep enough, but I'll report on it when it comes out or tell my side of it to start keeping a list, okay? Now, I think it seems irrelevant when you talk about a hairstyle, okay? And James saying, well, I did it for this reason when in actuality it's, I just wanted to look like all, we all knew that, we were not stupid. We all knew that he wanted to look like all these TikTok guys, right? But he said it was for this and now he's doing it for that, okay? If, I'm telling you right now, I guarantee you, okay? Because there's already about 50 things that she's done this on. If you start keeping a list on James Charles, five years down the road, that list is going to be six pages long. And the problem is, nobody did this with Jeffree Star, and now everybody's got to go back and they say, oh, Jeffree Star's taking accountability. Jeffree Star addressed it. And there's so many things Jeffree Star has never addressed and will never address and just said, oh, those people, those people were not my friends, okay? These people that come out like Tab David and you know, Cam Lester and all these people that came out and made really serious statements about Jeffree Star. Oh, those people, I don't know who those people were. They weren't my friends. And we just excuse it away and say, oh, Jeffree Star, he, he you know, has taken accountability. No, he didn't. He just said, you as a person, as a human being, do not matter. What you said does not matter. You were never in my life. You never mattered when you were in my life, and you don't matter now. So what you have to say doesn't matter, okay? And I'm telling you right now, I'm starting to see a lot of similarities between the rise of Jeffree Star and the rise of James Charles. I think we've seen it before. And how James Charles is handling situations, I think he's taking a cue from Jeffree Star. <clears throat> I've always thought, okay, that James Charles, that he saw Jeffree Star with this guy that just kind of came out of nowhere, gra gra Grand Rapids, Michigan, that until he, you know, dated Jeffree Star, had never been with a guy. And I think J James Charles has always looked at that and been like, that's what I want. I've, I've always believed that. Um, so, you know, I, I think it'll be interesting if, if you guys, I'm telling you right now, okay, if James Charles was smart, He'd get a life coach, he'd get a counselor, he'd get a PR person, and he'd get an attorney, okay? And he would start going to therapy on a regular basis and start taking a look at himself and start fixing himself and have a PR person to put out his statements because I'm going to tell you the next thing is about this Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards, okay? Because if he started taking a look at himself, I think that five or ten years down the road, maybe, maybe... Did, I'm t I just, I, this is not going in a good direction for James Charles. And I think his career is going to be over down the road. I really do. And I think if he would look at where Jeff Jeffree Star is now and what's happening with Jeffree Star, you know, but he don't care. This is where ego, arrogance, and pride come into place because they think they're above it. All right. So if, did you hear that James Charles is nominated for a, what do you call it? A Kids' Choice Award over on Nickelodeon. Okay, so here it is. I'll put up the thing right here on Nickelodeon. Favorite male social star. Let's look at this fools over here, okay? A bunch of buffoons that are nominated. Well, not all of them, but like, this is so ridiculous to me. David Dobrik and James Charles are both on the same Kids' Choice Awards at Nickel... Who is coming up with these voting, okay? Seriously, David Dobrik? And James Charles, like, who is coming up with this list, okay? So here it is. Favorite male social media star, James Charles, Jason Derulo, 
uh, David Dobrik, Ryan's World, Mr. Beast, and Ninja. And quite frankly, the only one that belongs on that list to me of a Nickelodeon Kids Choice Award is that Ryan's Toys, but he probably don't care anyway because he's making so much money up in the Walmart. You know what I mean? My nephew loves that Ryan's Toys. My sister-in-law, she don't. She's like... Everything he opens on video, they've got to have. You know what I mean? But, like, why are we having David Dobrik? Like, and, and there are male actors and female actresses that are, or fe there are male and female actors that are on there that are, like, older. Like, Robert Downey Jr. is, like, my age favorite actor and stuff like that. I don't know who, what kids are voting on these. I mean, they must be assuming that adults are going to vote on this. But what six-year-old is voting for David Dobrik? And furthermore... What six-year-old's parents are allowing, I mean, David Do why are your kids watching David Dobrik? Have you guys watched David Dobrik and Jason Nash's, th I mean, th and not to mention all of this stuff that has come out recently? Okay, so let's talk about James Charles for a second, okay? This is where if James Charles had a PR agent and he got notified that he was going to be on the Nickelodeon Choice Awards for a Kids' Choice Award... This is where you have your PR agent put a statement out to Nickelodeon. You say, thank you. I really appreciate the honor. Okay, this is where, and this is so completely different, but when the state of Tennessee honored Dolly Parton by giving her a statue and she said, thank you, but no thank you, because during the time in the pandemic that we're going through right now, this is not the time, okay? Maybe somewhere down the road, I think the grand state, once I'm here or gone or whatever, the great state of Tennessee will, but this is not the time, okay? She ain't even gotten in any trouble. I don't think Dolly Parton's gotten one bit of trouble her entire life, you know? Because she is a class act. Then James Charles needs, that his people need to contact Nickelodeon and say, thank you, but no thank you. Please, this is, I, this is not the time. Remove me from your list of Kids' Choice Awards. If James Charles does not do that and he stands up that thing, woo, that's where your need to have your back padded when you have come out in a statement and, a, and addressed what happened in a statement, okay? But you're going to allow yourself to sit up there on the Kids' Choice Awards? I don't get it. I, I don't get it, Okay. That, and I think he and David Dobrik both should say, you need to put some more people up there. Hey, JoJo C was on there, okay? I think she's a perfect example of somebody that belongs on that list, okay? And I think she should win all day long. There's all kinds of problematic people on this whole less list when you go through here. Hell, you have to vote to get to the next thing. You got to vote on each of the lists. I voted for Stranger Things all the straight way, all the way through. I did, true story. And I think David Guetta at the end, Global Star, or something like that, I voted for David Guetta. Why is David Guetta on a Kid's Choice Award? That don't even make no sense whatsoever. It's just a bunch of foolishness and tomfoolery. And who are these people? And this is my issue with it, Okay. Nickelodeon and the Kids' Choice Awards and the people that are involved that have sat there for a year putting this award show together have just said that what James Charles is alleging doing or whatever and the statement that he put out is okay. That's the problem with this, okay? This is why Nickelodeon has just signed off and said that they've co-signed this. That's a problem. Don't you think a little bit? When Jay, I'm not, we're not just talking about allegations. James Charles came out in a statement and he addressed it and took responsibility. Just saying, Nickelodeon. Anyway. <sighs> JoJo Siwa, honey, I hope you win. JoJo Siwa and Ryan's Toys, they deserve it all day long, okay? Other than that, I don't think there's anybody on that list that deserves to win, but maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, you guys let me know what you think about all that drama in the comment section below. I'm going to start trying to make my videos a little bit shorter unless you like them long. They've been real long the last couple days. I appreciate you guys sticking around for the long intro. I won't try to make my intro shorter uh, and get it more quicker into the drama. I love you guys so much, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.